Hello there, and welcome to my new tutorial about Metals and Dwarf Fortress. I'm Icon, and this is going to be the first of two videos. The first video will be about the base metals, what we can make out of them, what we cannot make out of them, what they're good for, how to make them, and all these things. And the second video I will dedicate to the topic of alloys, which will be made out of these metals. I find that these topics build up on each other pretty well, because, you know, Alloys are basically used best when you understand what the metals uh, are, are good for, and therefore I wanted to separate them because there's also a ton of information for both topics. So with that being said, the build-up of this video will be like a quick explanation of smelting and then explanation of all these metals that we can make. There's timestamps leading to every one of these metals, so if you want to check out a certain one, knock yourself out. Let's get started with smelting in general. Smelting is happening at the smelter. You find that one in the workshop, furnaces, smelter category. A smelter has to be out of stone and it has to have fuel to be operated with and it has to have a dwarf that operates it. And of course you need an ore to smelt there or metals to create new alloys out of because alloying is also happening at the smelter. The fuel you can use are, well, the typical candidates there are charcoal made out of wood at the wood furnace. Usually you will use charcoal only as a kickstarter to produce coke in larger scales, which is the most commonly used form of smelting fuel. Coke is gained out of lignite and bituminous coal, which uh, here you see there's a layer of bituminous coal, and you, you dig out that stuff and then you process it at the smelter into, into coke here. There's two different uh, work orders for these. And once you have that, you can smelt with that. The third option for fuel would be the most uh, economic and hard, dif most difficult to pull off one. That's the magma smelter. When you have magma available, you can build your smelter on top of that. And then you can just smelt for free, basically. But, uh, well, you have to have magma first, which might be not that easy. That being said, that's pretty much all you need for the smelting itself. So let's get started with those ores and metals. So for that, we're going to hang around in the stone used tab a lot, because here we can feature those ores quite decently. The first one on my list that I want to talk about is aluminum. We can find aluminum in the form of native aluminum, and that's pretty much all. That makes it a very rare metal. The thing about aluminum is quite interesting there. It's lightweight, it's very lightweight, and it's also very valuable. So typical uses of aluminum would be, therefore, furniture items with a high value, so a good use, for example, would be to make yourself a statue out of aluminum. You would receive pretty high values out of that, depending on the craft dwarf ship on the item. And besides that, a fringe use, if you really have too much aluminum, for whatever reason that might be, you, were also, um, you would also be able to make pretty useful barrels, bins, and all these things, because your dwarves carry around these containers a lot. And containers made out of lightweight materials are therefore pretty cool, because it makes your dwarves walk faster. But beyond that, I personally would really recommend you to use aluminum as a decorative material because that's where it has the strongest values. It's 40 dwarf bucks each, and that's alongside with platinum. And platinum is the most valuable of the base metals, so you get the idea. Next on my list is going to be bismuth. So bismuth is only found in bismuthinate, or however you pronounce that, and bismuth is kind of an odd one its main usage will be for the production of bismuth bronze because everything besides that it's not that useful for bismuth can be smelted into into metal bars so we can make that here smelt uh, bismuthinite ore and you will receive a metal that's not useful for weapons or armor Besides uh, that, it's it's just a good-looking metal, 
that you can use for its color, but it's low value, it's relatively heavy, and most of the time you will use your bismuthonite mostly for creating bismuth bronze, where it's really awesome because you can just uh, upgrade copper with that like crazy. Talking about copper, let's go into that because there's not that much more to say about bismuth. So, or good old jolly friend copper. Copper is a wonderful metal. You will find it in various different uh, deposits. So the most common ones will be malachite and tetrahedrite. There might be some, I don't know if there's other natively spawning um, deposits of that, but these are the most commonly found sources of copper. So why is copper so awesome? Copper is versatile. It's extremely versatile. You can make lots of good alloys out of it. You can make out of copper and tin, you can make bronze, which will totally upgrade the value of it. You can make brass out of it. And all in all, you can upgrade copper quite easily. But that's not all. That's just the beginning of our good old friend copper. Copper has some other pretty nifty uses. You can transform copper into picks. So you can make copper picks. That's the cheapest way of making mining equipment, basically, because the, the pick does not care about its material unless it's until it's used for combat. But the, there is no difference between an iron pick, a copper pick, or a steel pick in terms of mining speed. Therefore, it's really, really useful. Another thing worth mentioning is that copper makes awesome crossbows. Crossbows and uh, bolts are made out of copper because two reasons speaking for, uh, for it. Copper is relatively heavy, therefore a crossbow uh, made out of copper is a pretty good weapon in melee because once a dwarf with a crossbow is in melee, he's using that as a hammer-like weapon. Pretty good impact there. Copper bolts also relatively heavy, therefore good armor penetration values, and it's relatively cheap and abundant. So ranged weaponry made out of copper, pretty good stuff, it's a thing. Also beyond that, containers can also be made out of copper, albeit there I must say, take that with some, with some care. You can make every kind of container out of copper. You can make, make copper barrels, copper bins, and uh, if you go into the other objects category, you can make even pots out of it. So basically, we can make every form of, of storage item out of copper, but they are relatively heavy. But if you don't have any access to wood in larger scales or that, it might be really an option to scale out on. And the last thing, you can make cages out of it, which is pretty cool. So copper is extremely versatile and also makes a pretty darn good metal if you want to train your weapon and armor smiths so you don't waste that precious steel or, or something like that into really crappy projects. Just let them forge with copper for a while. There's so many ways of using copper and it's really, really great stuff to begin with. Next on my list will be gold, or good old friend gold. So in Dwarf Fortress, gold is, of course, a metal that comes with a high monetary value. Gold is only findable as native gold. I, you see it here, gold nuggets. Just like uh, the aluminum, it is therefore quite a rare metal. You won't find too much gold. Gold has its main uses relatively similar to aluminum. It's a decorative metal because it has a lot of value. It's pretty horrible for weapons and armor because it's too soft and too heavy, but it's also featuring a lot of qualities to be used as alloys. Basically, gold alloys are mostly about stretching the gold into into uh, more more items but all in all there's not that much to say about gold except for it's a really really good metal to make certain dwarfs in your city happy here i built a little bit of a uh, living complex out of platinum but this could have been also made out of gold here it satisfies the needs of my mayor and uh, just like that you can use 
gold as a ways and means to construct valuable environments for your dwarves to be happy in. Also, you can use native gold ore before you smelt it at the stonemason for the creation of golden furniture. It requires a little bit of trickery because you have to configure your stonemason to just pick up from a specific stockpile where only native gold ore can be stored, but it's not that hard to pull off and it uh, really brings interesting uh, options because this way you can make gold furniture like in various various ways you can make gold furniture out of everything that's rock and everything that's metal and that covers up a lot of the interior design of your dwarves all right enough about that let's get into the next metal which will be iron iron or good old friend iron nearly as versatile as copper so iron comes in various different forms you will find iron in the form of hematite in the form of limonite and last but not least, where's my friend? Where is it? I keep forgetting the last one. So, limonite, hematite, and uh, where is it? Magnetite. There it is. So, these are the three main sources of iron. Iron is a wonderful metal. In my opinion, if you have no access to bronze, you should definitely and totally make all your melee weapons and armors by default first off out of iron. Unless you're totally knowing what you're doing and you know all the better ways, but uh, if you're relatively newish to the game, know that iron is the best middle ground for melee weapons and armor in the game. The iron is basically only topped by steel and other otherworldly metals. And beyond that, iron is a very, very solid intermediate choice. Beyond that, what I said about copper, where you should... You shouldn't make your ranged weapons out of iron if you have copper available, but even there it isn't the worst choice. All in all, there's one or two more things to say about iron. First off, it's abundant. You can use it a lot. You can also use it to, to, make, uh, to make structures out of. You can make it can make storage uh, bins out of. Due to its sheer availability, you will have a lot of uses for it. But keep in mind, you will need iron for the production of steel. Iron is the raw material of steel. And another thing worth mentioning is anvils. Anvils can in this game only be made out of either iron or steel. So iron is therefore a keystone material to have more metalsmiths forges because without anvils no further forges so that's really worth mentioning about iron in general good -oh. so let's hop on over to the next one which will be lead so lead is kind of an odd one and lead is found in the galena ore i don't know any other ore that uh, features lead so lead is a little bit weird in so far as it has a very very low base value it's also very heavy it's also only really used in one alloy combination which you can basically there's other options even for the same stuff to put it into simple terms so what to do with your lead there it's a really good material to make crafts out of so uh, you can make your you can make knickknacks and uh, and stuff out of that. So when we go into the other object objects area, so we can make stuff like dyes or, or flasks or, or goblets or all these things, toys, whatnot. You can really do a lot of uh, trading value out of that. But beyond that, if you don't alloy it away, it's uh, something you. Uh, Fortress, uh, you, your smithies can use as a training material or you use it for construction purposes. But all in all, lead isn't that much of a desirable material in the game. At least not what I have found out. Please let me know in the comment section and uh, give me any impressions. The only other quite curious usage for lead, that's possibly the last one before I go to the next metal, is that 
Due to its heaviness, minecarts made out of lead smash even the most fierce monsters. So it's basically a really good way to overrun people because it's so darn heavy. But beyond that, seriously, let me know what you guys make out of lead. Because I'm a little bit, uh, I was a little bit bungled about this one when I made this video, when I prepared this video. So, the next one on the list, let's get on over to Nickel. So, Nickel is... Or how do we have it? Not Svalerite, or I always forget where Nickel came from. It's the only one that I forgot to write on. Yeah, here, Garnerite. So Nickel is interesting as it is a very, very good alloy metal. And most interestingly enough, it is also a magma safe metal. So I personally would say keep your uh, Nickel up or different alloys or well it has a pretty common ground with the with various other metals so it's one of them on my list where I say if you're not using it for the sake of alloying you can just uh, well find a other niche usage for it due to the fact that it only spawns in Ghana right and never in nowhere else it is not that common and most of the time when you have the uh, when you have nickel you also have something to alloy it in but i'm going to feature a little bit more about that in the second video next on my list is going to be tin found in the cassiterite ore tin is really interesting and so far as it is a very versatile metal Let's talk about its raw form first. Tin is also a very light metal. It's almost as lightweight as aluminum, but much less rare than aluminum. Therefore, it's a great material to make your barrels, bins, and pots, and all these things you usually have to use wood for. So you can make really lightweight containers out of it if you have no usage for its other um, for its other really really big quality and it's alloying the real cool thing about tin is you can use it to make bronze you can make it use it to make pewter but you can also make glaze out of it so tin can also be used to enhance your clay products by a lot so all in all ha tin is a happy material whenever you stumble over some cassiterite you can consider yourself lucky because if you're not using it for alloying or, or, or glazes you can use it for bins and whatnot and uh, conserve a little bit of your wood in that regard so next stop on the list is going to be platinum platinum is only found in native platinum and it's a very very uh, it's a very powerful material platinum is super heavy it's also super valuable. It comes uh, at 40 dwarf bucks per unit, and therefore it's basically the most valuable base metal that you can't get. I have built a little bit of a living complex for my mayor out of it, and it has a lot of uses when you want to go for valuables. It's also, due to its heaviness, you could also make a platinum minecart to run your enemies over, but that would be the most uh, blinkful way to kill your enemies off. And lastly, if you ever manage to get a dwarf to create an artifact out of uh, platinum, and that artifact would happen to be a blunt weapon like a hammer or a mace, that would make an excellent weapon, because the material qualities of platinum well they are just it's just made for heavy blood weaponry the downside is you cannot make it manually you have to wait until one of your dwarves has that spe specific mood so to summarize platinum super valuable super heavy you can use it wherever you need to create large values next on the list silver so silver is a pretty interesting uh, stuff as it comes in various uh, stones so silver can be found in tetrahedrite silver can be found in horn silver where it's the uh, pretty much the it's the purest form where tetrahedrite is a uh, very um, thin form so to say there's only 20% uh, of the time 
there's some silver in it and last but not least there's also galena which has 50 percent silver so silver is as you can see a metal that comes as a buddy metal so to say which uh, accompanies several other metals quite often what's silver good for it's again an alloying material you can make several alloys out of silver but mostly it is pretty cool because it's a fairly valuable material in its own and it doesn't come as valuable as gold and all these things but you can make quite intermediately valuable statues and decorational items for your fortress to increase the value and also silver has a pretty hidden niche use in the weaponry because of the fact that silver is fairly heavy and has some other weird stats that I cannot well explain well here. Basically, silver warhammers and maces are very, very powerful because they are almost as powerful as uh, other stuff like platinum, but with the downside that it wears down quite quickly. So silver weaponry gets damaged quite uh, fast because silver is a quite malleable uh, metal and it's not that hot, I guess. I don't know. This game is very, very detailed with these uh, systems and even after studying all the things and understanding how it works, it's it, it's hard to explain it in a way that you as uh, the audience can understand what I'm blabbering about. Just uh, as a last thing, silver ores are mostly valuable if they're used for alloying before being turned to a bar. So if you ever have tetrahedrite or galena, you should consider not smelting them into silver or their respective ores if you plan on alloying. I'm going to explain that a little bit deeper in the upcoming video, but the gist of it is, if you use a, a silver-bearing ore, you can massively increase the value out of it if you're using it as an ingredient instead of using a pure silver ore for the same recipe. But I'm going to explain these methods more in detail in the next video, but I have to emphasize it here because I felt like when I was going over silver, I felt like one of its most interesting aspects was that you were able to make such terrific alloy reactions out of it. Beyond that, silver is a little bit, uh, well, it's just silver, you know? It's not as valuable as gold. <laughs> it's, just uninterest it's not as interesting as platinum. It it's somewhere in between, and uh, yeah, I would use it a lot for alloying or intermediate uh, furniture things, like uh, decorating temples or building structures. So, we're almost done with our list. It's only zinc left on my list, yes. So, zinc. Um, zinc is found in sphalerite ore, it looks like that, and zinc is a very, very interesting candidate as it is, again, a very um, alloy-friendly material. Well, it has lots of uses in valuable, um, in valuable alloy processes where it can make new metals possible, but even if you're, if we're not including alloys, zinc has the same quality as tin and aluminum has. It features a very low weight. Therefore, it's a very good material like we've had it before for containers and all these items that have to be carried around a lot. Value-wise, raw zinc should be not used as a uh, well, as a value generator or anything. I personally felt like the most useful aspects of zinc were its alloy friendliness and its very low weight again, which is really awesome because if you ever live in a biome that has not much wood, these alternatives like zinc, tin, and even, even copper for containers can really make a big difference for your entire economy. Okay, so that were all the metals. What's uh, what I wanted to say before I end this video? Um, yeah, I forgot native copper. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to say. You can see the difference between an alloy and a raw metal at the smelter like this. Every alloy and the like is being 
found in the top half, whereas when you're making in raw metal, it's always about smelt ore. Every reaction here that has the uh, wording like smelt ore produces a raw metal, and all these reactions up here make nickel silver bars, make bronze bars, that's usually alloying, with a yeah, coke here that is an outlier of my rule here, but you get the idea. Right on. So now we know 50% of the smelter quite well, and I hope you found that helpful. Feel free to leave me your comments down below if you have any questions or things you might want to add. I'm really eager to know what you know, because it's really a deep and uh, complex topic. And I want to say again, I really grossly simplified the armor and weapon aspects. There's a lot more behind it, but I wanted to condense it down to a point where people can understand. And yeah, feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed, and feel free to subscribe. There's daily content, and if you like that one, chances are you'd like the rest of the stuff I'm producing as well. Also, in the description box, there's a playlist link to all manner of different Dwarf Fortress tutorials of mine as well, and also links to supporting this channel. There's Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me a Coffee as ways and means to support me as a content creator, and I'd be really happy if you check them out, because I have no bigger sponsorships behind me, except for you wonderful people, so a big thanks to the supporters out there, and thanks for watching this video, even with all the ads. You're really amazing. So, see you guys at the next video, and have a good one.